In this video, we're going to talk about the concept of using external libraries within your Solidity contracts. Now, as you continue to develop contracts in the Ethereum network, you will find that you'll start using code over and over again throughout your different contracts. Now, rather than copying and pasting every time you want to reuse that code, it's more efficient to create a library that you can then import into your new contract and reuse it that way. So let's uh, walk through what a library looks like in Solidity. Uh, a library in Solidity is very similar to that of a contract. It starts in a file that ends in .sol. You give it the Solidity version that you want the compiler to use. But instead of uh, defining a contract, you use this library keyword. So you use the library keyword, then you give it a name, uh, some brackets, and then you put all the functionality that you want to be reused within um, those brackets. So let me walk you through this step by step and kind of explain what's going on. So this first piece right here is a struct. Now all struct is is a data type um, much like an integer, or a string, or an array, but it kind of allows you to define your own type or object, so to speak, and then give it a bunch of different attributes. So in this case, I only have one attribute, but technically a struct can have as many attributes as you want. So I could, for instance, put a bool here and just call it foo and then a string bar and just add more and more as, if, as I wanted it. In this case, we're just going to use a mapping. And so we've created a struct group. So later on, we can actually create a brand new variable of type group. And so what this mapping is basically doing is just going to map an address to a Boolean. Um, and we're going to call it members. And the Boolean just basically says, yes, this address exists when, within this group. Um, so this library is basically just going to manage um, groups for us, and the groups are going to contain addresses. And I think I've described this before in a previous video, but the way mappings work in Solidity is that there is no such thing as an undefined um, key within your mapping. So if I sent or if I tried to look up um, look up an address that wasn't actually in the mapping it wouldn't give you undefined or null it would actually give you something like zero so actually it would give it false in this case because I, I set it to bool so um, the way we kind of check to make sure that an address exists is uh, we give the address key the value of true and that's how we decide that the address is actually there and then moving on we've got a function and this function takes a group as its first parameter and notice this storage keyword now this storage keyword basically tells the ethereum virtual machine that when we pass in uh, this group, we want to reference it by its actual uh, memory address or storage location address. Cons um, since this is not really memory, this is being stored on the blockchain. So we want to reference it by its actual location. Therefore, we can actually modify its uh, value rather than taking a copy of whatever is passed in and then modifying that. And we do this because uh, this library is external to any contract that we're using. And this is the only way for the Ethereum uh, virtual machine to know that we are referencing the group that's going to be passed in from the contract that is using this library. And then the next uh, parameter we have here is an address and it returns a Boolean, um, basically true or false, whether or not it succeeded. And, uh, all we're doing is checking to see if the address already exists. Um, if it does, we return false because they're already there. And if it doesn't, we set that key to true and then return true again because we've successfully added a new member to the group. 
And then the final function we have is just the opposite of that. Um, we're removing a member from the group. Uh, we're also, again, taking a group as the first parameter, referencing by its storage address, passing an address as the second parameter, returning Boolean true or false. Um, again, if it's if uh, the member doesn't exist, we can't remove it, so we return false. Um, if it does exist, we set it to false, thereby removing it, and then return true because it's successfully removed. So let's go and start using this library in a new contract. So I've got this empty contract called library fun. Uh, and the way you use a library is much like you would in JavaScript. So you use the import keyword and basically you just give it the file name. So we import groups.sol. Sorry, I'm actually importing this at the wrong location. You need to import it at the top of the file, outside of the contract. You can't import inside of a contract. All right, that worked. So what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna create a group. Um, and the way you do that is you reference the library name and then the type that's within the library. And we're gonna call this admins. So we have a new admins group. Uh, and then the first thing we're gonna do is add ourselves to the admins group. And we're gonna do that using a constructor. So we can re reference that function within the groups library. So add member, and then remember we have to pass in a group. So we created this new group admins, so we're passing that, and then an address. And in this case, it's gonna be message.sender. So we've added ourselves to the group. Uh, and so the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna create basically a proxy function to the add um, member group. And we're just gonna call it add. This is gonna take an address And that's that. Uh, we're also going to create an event. We're just going to call it success. And this is just so we know that um, whatever we did uh, succeeded. It's not really going to tell us much. It's just going to, when we see uh, down below and we start trying to run these functions, it's going to um, tell whether or not it succeeded. And then the next thing we're gonna do is create a modifier. And this modifier is basically going to only allow admins to run this function. So only people that are added to this admins group can run um, the function that we add this modifier to. So only admins, and then we're gonna require that whoever is trying to run this function, which is message.sender, require that they're part of the admins uh, dot members mapping. So So basically this require statement, checks for truthiness of this. And so, um, like we mentioned before, in the groups library under this mapping members, um, it's a mapping of an address to true or false. So if the, the address doesn't exist, it's gonna be false. If it does exist, it's gonna be true. So if this is true, then we continue down to this area, which is basically just inserting the function that we're trying to run. If not, it's going to throw an error. So this new add function is only going to be able to be run by admins. 
because we don't want anyone else but besides an admin adding more people to the admin group that would make any sense so if uh, they pass through this modifier we'll just go ahead and call groups.add or add member and then the address that we add to it and then we're going to test whether or not it fails so if it returns true then we're just going to call this success event now oh yeah I forgot to actually pass in the group so there's that uh, and then let's go ahead and just add one more function the remove function which is just a proxy to uh, the delete member function again only admins can do this if groups member Alright, so this looks like it's ready to run. Let's go ahead and create this. It's created. And so we created it with this address, which means uh, we can copy this last address down here, go back to there. We can add it. And let's go ahead and click add. And you see the success event was fired, so we're able to do that. Let's go ahead and remove. Again, we're able to do that because we passed through this only admins uh, modifier. And so let's cut this again. And let's try this from another address. Let's try doing this. Had. Nope, it launches an error, so we're not able to do that. So let's go ahead back to our creating address. Let's create that. And then let's pick this address over here, a totally different address. Go back to this bottom address, which we, were, we just added to our list. And then add this new address. And success, because we've been added to the group, we are now able to modify other members of the group. And that's pretty much it. Uh, if you like this video, please click like and subscribe and go ahead and tell your friends. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.